Manchester United nil, Manchester City three. An absolute pasting mm. uh, from United's rivals in the derby. I'm joined by Joe McGraw. We've got Ronaldo and Ange as well coming up just over there in a couple of minutes. But first of all, Joe, how do you feel after that? How does it feel to be a Manchester United fan right it's now? It's quite deflating, isn't it? I, I honestly thought we'd we'd move past the times of getting a bit of a pasting by our uh, rivals. Especially, I thought Ten Hag might have learned going away to Anfield and getting beat 7-0, that this is horrific for the fans, for morale, for everyone that is involved at the club. But you turn up to Old Trafford today, you've got Sir Bobby Charlton being remembered, you've got legends on the pitch who've worked their arse off for the club, and then you go and you get spanked three 0 at home. I think every single person from the from the the start at eleven, all the coaches, the manager himself should be embarrassed because it was a, it was just awful, it's deflating as well. You think, not again. I know it is. It is shit that we have to admit that this season is a big step back from last season. That's, that's it is. that is so infuriating. Like you said, you, I didn't maybe think that these days were completely behind us because. I know how these things can go sort of back and forward and it's a sort of a moving form rather than, you know, United are back. But I didn't think that we would be getting battered and sort of humiliated yeah. and look so lifeless in a game like that. First 20 minutes, we looked okay. Again, we had some half chances and some counter-attacks that we didn't even turn into chances. We looked a little bit dangerous, but once we didn't score, we it was, it was always going to be one thing. And yeah. once City started scoring... We couldn't really slow it down. That's that goal just at the start of the second half, where it's, it's an area where City have been really strong this season, scoring goals um, in the second half and just after half time, and we sort of fell for it. Big we space, did. big gap on the left hand side. Ball gets crossed into Haaland, who is stood by himself in the box with you know some some clever movement, but nothing too fancy. And immediately he's got a free header, a free header that he'd had f- f- in game minutes wise about six minutes before in the first half. And yeah. we've not learned, and yeah. it's happening again. And then after two 0 it could have been anything really. Everything slowed mm. down a bit. United had a, a couple of minutes where they looked like they had some energy, but for the most part, the second half was just pathetic. We're United. just not working as a team. We simply aren't working as a unit that want to win football games and try and do the best for for the fans and everyone. And, and they're just highlighting a couple of things here uh, where we're watching about just players not tracking back, not working together, not being a unit. And City are. And other yeah. teams are Tottenham are Arsenal are Brighton are Villa are we seem miles away from even dreaming of top four this season yeah. and we're only 10 games in how can we even think about that, that right now I know. It's, yeah it just feels like I'm a bit tired of it yeah we'll go through the goals and we'll go through some particular moments but I want to get you two over there Ange and Ronaldo obviously um, I'll start with you Ange just when you watch that and you think about the, the improvements we made last season, this was like a, well, I suppose we, we still got battered last season, but not Old Trafford. That was the difference, wasn't it? Yeah. Teams came to Old Trafford and we beat them. We beat them all. This today, it never really looked close to United winning this game, did it? No, not at all. I think, like we said at half time, you know, the first half, it was good to see United start off better than I personally expected but it just gradually just started to decline yeah. back to what we're so used to at the moment which is just the the pieces of the jigsaw just not fitting together there's no consistency people are just you, you wouldn't think looking at some of those players you wouldn't have even thought it was the Manchester derby like you've no. got no, to yeah, question true. mentality you've got to question absolutely everyone across the board for this and you would have thought that I, I always feel like if you can walk away being like, you know what, everyone left it all on the pitch. Like mm. they really, really yeah. worked so hard, especially with the day that it was. It just makes it 10 times worse because there's no fight there. There's And it, the mentality within that team, it is shocking. Yeah. And it's really, really scary because I don't see how they're going to be able to... Mm. How do you bring that back? How do you get them to care? Like, it doesn't make sense. And if they can't care on a day like today. Yeah. Exactly. It's mm. worrying. On a big day like today. What yeah. did you think, Ronaldo? Because obviously you're watching it. You've, you've got an eye for a, a tactical view. What, what was going on there? What, what, what did you see there that either you didn't want to see or that we didn't see enough of? I thought the half-time substitution to take Amrabat off and... To bring Mount on, um, yeah. I know a lot of pe- I know United fans are kind of calling for Mount to start the game. Why is he not on the team? He spent sixty million on him in the summer. He was the marquee midfield signing. Why is he not playing? For him to then take Amrabat off and to 
brought McTominay back into an area of the pitch what in which we've seen that he can't perform at a high level in, especially against a team like City who dictate the ball very well, they press very high, they're very organised, they're very solid. It was quite baffling to me. And I think we got we got worse straight away. And at half time I said, under Ten Hag, and especially this season, United are terrible in second halves. Mm. And we said at half time and then we saw it unfold in the second half anyway. Where they can what they score within the first four minutes? Yeah, it was the, I think it was the fifth, so 48th minute. Forty-five minutes or sixty minutes in a game like this are very, very important after the break. Yeah, and too often now teams come out much better, much more energized, much more enthusiastic, with them playing at a much higher tempo within that period, and we concede too many goals and concede a lot of momentum too much in that period of the game, and that's exactly what happened today. And then we never got it back. City turned up when City. I think City were going through the motions a little bit in the first half and they kind of come out the second half and they kicked it up a gear and then we couldn't live with them. And it seemed like they had more space in the second half as yeah. well though. It didn't just look like they you know, they decided to turn it on. That second goal, the pass out to the left-hand side, it's not even, obviously the pass was, was good and he had space on the left, but the ball was played through an absolute vacuum yeah. of United players. There was a, a, a sort of 25, 10 yards wide, 40 yards long gap with no United players in it defensively and it was just comfortable yeah, it was, well, just it was weird it was weird because lot, it was it? weird because I think Ten Hag does, does he sh- I feel like he does deserve a little bit of criticism for some of the setup I think the setup was a little bit odd in terms of his team selection to begin with mm. and then his substitutions have, see, have proved to be quite a weak point would you say of his management as well that, that I didn't think that actually the 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 first the, the team in the first half obviously I know that we went in one nil down but it was a penalty that was one that often isn't given I didn't think City made that I thought first half the actual setup actually kind of worked okay when you consider our back four is a, just a mess and that we, we we looked dangerous we had a, a bits here and there sit with a better team but they are the the goal was a, a penalty which didn't come from a ch- I don't know I just I didn't no, think the lineup was poor. I, I don't know. No, I, just I think, I think but it's on the tactic side of it, though, it was it's it's a little bit destroyed. And he has made some baffling decisions with his selections and his setups and his tactical tweaks in game. But his yeah. in game management is what a lot of people criticise in terms of the subs he makes. Yeah. So, and I think the one that he made at half time affected um, United a lot anyway. And I don't know whether it's because of the pressure and the fact that we're not playing well and things seem to not be working. It's like a lot, like what you said, Andrew, a bit of um, square pegs, round holes. Mm. Mm. And you got like, I think he looks a little bit desperate, um, I think, Tanakh, in terms yeah. of some of the decisions he's making. I think he's scrambling mm. a little bit, thinking, you know, almost trying to find an, an antidote, but there really isn't, if, if it makes yeah, sense. He's right. struggling to find it. And he's, and he's struggling, and, and this is a good bit of pressure being placed upon Tanag now I think there's a lot of pressure on fans in no way at all am I putting any pressure on Tanag but the balance is tipped a little bit he was doing he was doing more good things than bad things but I think slowly the bad things are starting to creep up the the big defeats the changes the the way we're playing also you got to take into consideration obviously the players he's got available for him but you know, there was there was good play- players on that bench. Where as if at the start of the game, he said he was playing uh, Evans and Maguire, and I think he says this in jest that he was doing it for a tactical reason. But if he wasn't, and Varane and Regulon are, are fit and can mm. get 45, 50 minutes out of him, sixty minutes even, he, would you not play the best players? Yeah, I, I don't, don't know. know. I feel like Tenag, he's know. got there's a little pressure mounting on him. He needs to do something soon. I We've got the Newcastle mid- midweek. T- I, they might rock up and beat us. To me, mm. I, I I think the midfield had more issues than the defence. Yeah. Like specifically, I think by the end, Johnny Evans is is sleeping when they score that that second goal. Yeah. So that's it's not by the end, but I think um, sorry the third goal, Johnny Evans is sleeping. But I'd, I think the midfield, the inability to hold the ball in there, I know McTominay, to be fair, didn't actually have his worst game today, but it wasn't good. Yeah. You know, Amrabat, it, it was a bit weird that he got subbed off, but it wasn't because he was playing so brilliantly. It was because we sort of, you might think we then lack this kind of defensive structure. Mm. But it, Amrabat wasn't controlling the game by any means. It wasn't like, oh no, we need him. It was, well, what do we lose if he comes off rather than look how many great things he's doing. I, I just, I think the midfield for me was, was the real issue um, 
and I don't know what what more we could have done. I don't know. I just, th- just this is almost it's more baffling and more frustrating and more dis- disheartening that I can't point to something and go, oh look, that happened today and we lost. Yeah. It's like that did, that did, that did, that did. The players aren't good enough. The manager's tactics weren't great. The changes weren't there. They didn't look like they cared. Like it's just fucking twenty medium-sized problems. Yeah. And okay. I, like, I don't think sacking the manager fixes those problems. And I don't think getting one player fixes those problems. It's like we're seven or eight solutions away from being even near City. We've not even spoke about the effort part of it because I was looking at that third goal there. Do you see the way that Rodri just kind of just strolls past Ericsson? Mm. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, it's a little, that happens that's with Ericsson in the 60th minute onwards, doesn't it? Because he ain't got the legs. Yeah. We know that. Ten Hag knows that. That's why he brought, he brought he, he didn't start him against Copenhagen. Like, it just feels like every every... Every piece has to be sort of reinforced and we need a solution before we've even got the, the fix. Like, Ericsson can't play for 90 minutes. Great, okay, well they, that's just shit then, isn't it? Like, McTominay can't really pass the ball or receive it off the defence. Okay, that's crap. Like, look at City's midfield. Can Rodri last 90 minutes? Obviously. Yeah, you know, some of these there, questions like. that we have over our own players, City don't have about <coughs> anyone. Effort, can you last 90 minutes? Can you receive the ball off your defence? That is just a given with everyone in City's team. Yeah. And we're going, well, let's let's do 30 minutes of that. And then just it's like we're adding fucking 70 different ingredients. Yeah. And they've got, no, look, we've just got a nice meal here. Like, we have to fix things before we've even... I don't even know. Our first team feels like it's it's got so many issues with it that you have to... I don't even know. Mm. You, you're applying a bandage to a team that should be full strength yep. before it's even gone out there. And I just, like... The right hand side, we ain't got a right winger that really. Anthony don't really score any goals, so we've got to play Bruno because the midfield is good enough. We don't have we goals. Score. We don't have goals. Like there be times in my like sort of United fan life where if we were two 0 down, I knew where the goals could come from. Yeah. But when we were two 0 down, it's like I just don't know who's scoring for us here, or who's been the hero today, or who's going to bag a hat trick. What uh, did, yeah. yeah. What did you What did you think, Angie, in terms of United going forward now? What is what's the next step out of this? Is it just relying on injuries? Is it transfers? Do you think the manager's going to be coming under that real like like what's next? What is next? Because I I can't even see a yeah. way out of this to be honest. It it's tough, and the whole thing about the manager and the pressure. It's like this is really going to show us what this guy is made of, and yeah. if he's cut out for Man United. I agree. I don't think that you know sacking him by Christmas is going to solve the issues because there are so many of them Mm. and it is unfortunate that it may have to be one of these situations where we've got to give him time as painful as it is for us all you know if we just carry on you know who who else would you bring in no one else could actually control this this and also who would want to go you want Mm. someone that wants to that would want to manage Manchester United and at the minute there are so many issues I don't even know who you would bring in so I think you know you've got to give him this chance now however much time they're going to give him you've got to give him this opportunity now but it's my main thing like i said is this whole mentality thing with the players and it's just like if you don't want to be there then they need to get rid at this point because what is the point this is so difficult at the moment and the last thing you need is toxic minds in that dressing room Mm. that don't want to be there don't really care don't want to help the club progress so i think they've got to look at recruitment transfers it's you know i'm already thinking about january and i'm thinking yeah. who do we need to bring in and who needs to go because all of these issues that are going on it's just making it worse you've got all this stuff on the pitch of the tactics you know w- players in different positions and who fits where and how does the midfield look you've got all these things on the pitch that are stressful and then on top of that you've got things like you said you know oh well who can even play 90 minutes mm. it's uh, like how is that even a thing and then uh, you've got there's just so <laughs> many there's four, there's four or five players in that top 11 that you don't even trust to play for like johnny evans haven't really got 90 minutes in no it. like at this point, I, I worry about... I mean, to be fair, he's, he's done pretty well, but Dallow's played every game twice a week for, like, six weeks in a row. Yeah. He's played just constantly. Ericsson can't play 90 minutes. Casemiro, I know he's not playing today, but I don't really see 90 minutes in him no. at the minute. Like, Hoyland, I don't know what's going on with his back. Has he got 90 minutes in him? It's just mad. And, Ronaldo, what do you think the next step is going forward? Is it a back the manager and... Let's try and get some confidence back. Um, is there a manager in the world that could have beaten City with Evans and Maguire as, you se- as your starting centre backs? Um, or that prob- would be favourites, even? Uh, probably not. But uh, I think 
managerial, I think is it will fall at the feet of the manager. That's just how modern yeah. football works mm. anyway. But um, I don't know how many managers United can go through before obviously the realisation is that the problem's obviously much bigger than that. Because if I'm looking at what United may need to kind of fix this, and I'm, I'm edging towards thinking it might have to be a miracle. If I'm, if I'm, <laughs> mm. Do you know what I mean? Because look, I'm looking at it and I'm like, mm. there's so many stuff wrong with the club as a whole. And I feel like a lot of the, the issues has been so cemented for so long now yeah. that I think the, I think the turnaround, it's, it's not going to be a quick thing. No. But my issue is I think United is still going in the decline. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And we can't, I feel like we are witnessing, like it, it might sound a little bit melodramatic, but we are witnessing a, a kind of, not dying almost, but United are on a very, very concerning trajectory, I think, in terms yeah. of, where other clubs around us are going and where we are. And I don't think there's a quick fix and that's the problem. I think there might be a few more years of pain before we get the United that we want Snoo back unless significant things changes because mm. Ten Hag looks like he can question his in-game management and his selection stuff. But sometimes I think a lot of this with the manager comes from things being so desperate I feel like a United a manager comes to United and they're already up against it mm. I feel like they're almost fighting a little bit of a losing battle and it's just like as soon as shit hits the fan you've got this kind of culture where players give up they don't give any effort they kind of think oh it's fine I'm, I'm contracted here anyway mm. I'll just out basically out outlive the manager almost I feel like there's a lot of that in modern game as well with players and I don't know I think it's um you know, you can pretty much tell I'm pretty much scraping the barrel for answers because I don't I think really have them. It's also hard with last season. There was so much hope, and yeah. I think we all thought like we're getting back on the right track now. Yeah. And I think to have that little bit of hope offered to us, and then it's been like snatched away. I think mm. that makes it even more painful for me, anyway. Yeah. I mean, even look at some of the the teams that have been successful recently. Look at Liverpool. They were shit when they had all those injuries, weren't mm. they? They what was it? They lost six games at home in a row. Mm. Something I don't think they'd ever done before. Or certainly not done for a, a, a long time. Like it, injuries and, and and the personnel do affect things. And you know, I, I don't even know. It's just the manager's going to take the heat. He is because yeah. he's the manager. Mm. He's the one who's in charge of winning games. The players are going to take the heat because they're on the pitch. There's just like you said, Ronaldo. It's almost you need a bit of space from it to sort of actually bring someone in, change something um, uh, where you say, right, let's look at every part of the club. Could that be better? Could that be better? Could that be better? Could that be better? And if the answer is yes, then make it better. And then let's see where we are in, in 18 months, two, three years time. Because at the minute, there are so many obvious issues that go way beyond the manager and even some of the players. That you just think, how can we ever succeed? Like you said, in that environment where things are just horrible. Um, I think that's probably enough. Yeah, uh, this, isn't it? I mean, it's, it's just deflating, horrible, isn't it? it? I mean, it's so deflating. Obviously, it's obviously this is what we do. We try and talk break, talk about football, but when it's when you get beat three 0 by like, an absolute rival, Manchester in the derby, it's like it can be tough, can't it? Yeah, it's horrible. It's absolutely horrible. Right, thank you for joining us. Hit subscribe. Get your thoughts in as well. What's going wrong here? What is the problem with Manchester United? Um, just seeing the league table behind it. Nine behind points behind City is crazy. Nine already. points behind City after ten games. It's, it's been a disastrous start to the season, hasn't it? And, um, yeah, we'll be here for the rest of the season. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Ange. Uh, good to see you back on the channel. Thank you, Ronaldo. Always good to have you on as well. Joe McGrath, where can people find uh, you? Sloppy Joes, please. Uh, it's a great fun podcast with him. Yeah, not so fun. Not so but... fun now. Glad we're not recording after this. Yeah, that'd be terrible. Thank you for joining us. Hit subscribe to Stretford Paddock, of course. And we'll see you in a bit.